Hi, this is Holly, the Techie Mom Suso for WordPress Academy. And today I'm going to be demonstrating for you how to use GIMP, which is a, a software for editing images. You can use this application to create your own images as well as use it to edit existing images. So the um, thing that you need to know about GIMP is that it has uh, different stages. The uh, first stage to bring to your attention is the toolbox. And this is where you can select different tools to allow you to do different things. Um, so the uh, top layer is typically the um, selection tools. You have the rectangle, elliptical, and also the lasso tool. These, all of these tools are, are, are typically for selecting an image um, out, uh, and um, copying and pasting it or removing part of an image, separating an image um, from its background. Um, so you can use uh, different uh, images or sorry, different uh, tools here to achieve a lot of different effects. You have your move tool here. Um, these tools are for scaling and changing the perspective of an image. Um, this tool is for creating text. So if you want to create a text effect, you have different fonts that you can use just like Adobe Photoshop or Illustrator or any of your other uh, image editing suites to create text images and then um, On this layer, you have your uh, scaling tools and these tools help you make uh, the image or the layer smaller or larger, changing its perspective. And then you also have your text tool for it creating text, uh, just like in Photoshop or Adobe Illustrator, or any of your other text or image editing suites, you can create text on a layer and do a lot of really cool things. Then you have your drawing and colorization tools. Um, here are some other uh, tools that are used for coloring and, um, and modifying an image, its clarity, uh, and, and those so sorts of things. And then, of course, your colors. You've got your foreground color and your background color. Underneath, you have some options that are specific for the tool. So if you click on a tool, you'll see this part of the stage change. And this is um, this gives you some options for that particular tool. So as you click through um, those tools, you will see the options here change. In the middle, this is my working area. And um, it has, of course, the same kind of toolbar that you have on top of any other your, your applications. Um, but this is my working area where I can open and close images. On the right hand side, I have my layers. My layers is where I can, um, I'm, I'm typically uh, able to separate the different elements of my uh, project like a um, text layer, a graphic layer, um, uh, and so forth. And then lastly, these are the brushes. And this gives me a little bit of control over um, the brushes in my, um, in my project if I want to make um, drawing uh, like the pencil tip or a uh, or a airbrush tip if I want to make it finer or um, wider then I can do that here okay so essentially that is your uh, working area of GIMP and now I'm going to show you how to start working inside the GIMP application Okay, so what I want to show you how to do is create an image, a small icon, out of a larger image. So as you can see on my main stage, I have one image, it's a flattened image, that has several pictures on it. 
And what I want to do is I want to use this, I want to break this up into several icons. So what I'm going to do is uh, select the computer screen as my first image. And the way that I do that is I actually made sure that I had my rectangle selection tool uh, selected. And then I s simply drag my mouse, click and drag my mouse over that. Now, most people know how to do copy and paste. So I'm just going to copy that and paste it into a new file. So I'm going to click New and OK. And I'll move this in front so you can see. But before I paste it, what I actually want to do is create a new layer. So on my layer stage, I'm going to click on New Layer and I'm going to call it computer icon and I'm going to click OK. And it's on that layer that I want to paste it. Now if you'll notice on the right hand side where my layers are, I now have three layers. The first one is the background with the white layer which is the one that I started with. The second one is the computer icon and it has no background color and that's the one that I created. And then the third one is actually the, the selection that I just pasted. And what I need to do is drop it. Right now it's just kind of hovering over my new layer. I need to go ahead and drop it onto that layer. That's called anchoring in this application. So if I mouse over the marching ants or the selection, you'll see an, air, uh, an anchor come up. I just click on that and now you can see it dropped the selection onto the computer icon layer and I just have the two layers. So now the thing that I want to do is this image right now, the whole image is 400 by 400 pixels. If I'm going to use this as an icon and a website or in a document, I don't want it to be 400 by 400 pixels because that means it's going to have this huge white area around it. What I want it to be is around 90 pixels. So again, I'm going to use my selection tool and just select the computer screen and its shadow. And when I get the marching ants, what I want to do now is go to layer and choose fit canvas to select to selection. And so that will now shrink this image. As you can see now, my image is 82 by 68 pixels and it's no longer a large Im image. It's small enough that I can use it as an icon. Next, I want to show you the lasso tool. Occasionally, you may have an image particularly of um, a person or a thing that you want to drop into a different background, but you, um, but you don't, you know, maybe you don't like the, the background that you have in here. Maybe you want to take this person and set them outside instead of the, with the background that they have behind them. You want a, a transparent background. So the lasso tool is really uh, helpful for this. Um, now this lasso tool, it takes um, a bit of practice with. So typically uh, uh, someone who has a lot of experience with the graphic application will be really good at this. But I'm going to show you um, essentially how to utilize it. So this is your lasso tool over on your toolbox. It's called the free select tool here in GIMP. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the uh, bottom of this image. So what I do is I click my mouse key. Oops. I click my mouse key where I want to start, which is right here at the bottom of my uh, red jacket. So I'm going to click here. And I'm simply going to take my lasso tool and I'm going to start selecting, clicking and selecting around the outside of this image. And I don't really mind that I'm cutting off a little bit of my hair, it's fine. 
and again, I'm I'm not being that uh, I'm not being that exact about this because it really does take quite a long time, and I would actually zoom in and be a lot more exact with this. But I just want to show you essentially how you do it. So I'm going to keep going around. And the reason why I'm going in small little pieces like this is so that I can make a curve. Otherwise, I would get a straight edge. And I don't want that because obviously my head is not flat. So I'm going to keep going around and selecting. on the outside edge. I'm going to go all the way down. Keep coming around until I get all the way down to the bottom. Once I get to the outside of the picture, I can just drag to the to the bottom of the picture and then I'm going to go all the way across to uh, till I get to the other side. And then I'm going to join it at my first my first loop. And you'll see that, that um, this is my first loop because now the icon uh, above the lasso turns into a plus. And if I click there, I should be able to close this now. There we go. So now I'm able to close it. And as you can see, now it turns into the marching ants, just like the um, selection tool did before. So now I can hit the Control X. And as you see, I just removed me right out of that picture. And I'm going to create a new picture now, or a new stage now, with a white background. And again, don't forget to create a new layer first. And I'm going to call this layer Holly Photo. And I'm going to paste me right onto there. I'm going to anchor this uh, selection, this floating selection onto the layer that I just created. So as you can see now, there's two layers. And there you go. Now it looks like I am just in the, with a white background, with no background um, with me in the photo studio. Now, the reason why, uh, again, I was saying that um, typically you would want to zoom in and be more exact is because obviously we know that um, edges of a person are not that smooth but for your use if you don't mind that then fine you're done um, but if you want it to look a little bit more natural then you would zoom in and be more exact and get really fine point around the hairs and around the jacket and um, making sure that uh, you really are just getting the image that you want to extract and put it onto a new layer. But essentially, you have it. I have now removed uh, me, a, a person, out of a photo and dropped it onto a white background. So now I can do anything by adding a, a second layer, which could be the beach or the hills or whatever. And um, it would look like I took a photo there instead of at the studio. What I'm going to do is show you how to make an image 
with um, multiple layers and multiple images. So what I'm going to do is start with a banner that's about 900 pixels wide and 200 pi pixels uh, tall. And what I want to add on to that is a, uh, a little bit of this flag. And I'm going to add my photo. And I'm also going to add some text. So the first thing I want to do is select, copy, and paste the flag onto my banner. So I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to go to my banner. And I'm going to make sure that I create a new layer to paste this on. And I'm going to call this flag layer. And then paste it onto that layer. Now, remember that I need to anchor this layer. So I'm going to mouse over to the marching ants so that I see my anchor and then click on it. Um, now, the thing that I want to do is, uh, actually, I think I'm just going to leave it just like that with the stars, uh, the, the blue and white stars. So next, I want to add my photo. So I'm going to come up and choose my photo, the um, layer with me in it. And I am going to copy it and paste it into a no, new layer here. Okay, so I've pasted my picture. And again, I need to anchor that layer. So I say, okay. Now I want my image to be a little bit smaller. So I'm going to select the scale tool on the left hand side and come over to uh, my image. And if I uh, click on that layer, it's going to bring up this dialog log block, uh, dialog box that says scale. Now, there's a couple things that I can do. I can manually scale it um, by just changing the, uh, the pixel size. Right now, that, that uh, image is, is uh, at 899 by 200, that's what it's saying. This this image is. I don't want to scale it. I, I scale it that way. I just want to do it manually. So I'm going to make my image a little smaller by doing this. And I think that's probably going to be about the size that I want it. So now I just want to move. So I'm going to go back over to my toolbox. I'm going to select the move image or, or the move tool and move my photo right over there. Okay. And now what I want to do is add some text. So I'm going to click on the text tool. And I want to add it to uh, another layer. So I'm going to select new layer. And I'll just say text. Click OK. And um, what color should we use? Let's use red. So I'm going to select red for my text. And I'm going to click here and say Happy Veterans Day from the Tech E Mom. Holly Suso. Okay. And I will click close. And as you can see, it's there. 
All right. Now, um, I want this text to be, um, I want it to be centered. So I'm going to select it all. And let me see if I can just simply center it. And, oh, here's centered. Okay, so now it's centered. And I want it, the um, font to be a little bit bigger because right now it's 18 point and 18 pixels. And I want it to be bigger. So I'm going to make it bigger there. And I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so happy Veterans Day from the techie mom, Holly Suso. And then I am going to add a, I want to add a um, shadow to this. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to merge down the Happy Veterans Day layer over here on the right to the text layer. So I'm going to merge it down. So now I just have one layer that's my text layer. And I want to add um, a special effect to it. So I'm going to go over here to my toolbar and I'm going to select Light and Shadow and I'm going to come down here to drop shadow. Let me try that again. Light and shadow. And drop shadow. So it's telling me that I already have, there it is. So now I want to um, create a shadow for this. And I think probably my shadow is going to be white instead of black. And that'll probably show it better. So I'm going to select white and click OK. And the offset, the X offset and the Y offset, those are um, the distance from where your shadow is going to be. So if you kind of think about when the sun is hitting an image and casting a shadow onto the ground, the X and Y is um, actually where the sun is, is, uh, would be behind you. So if it's going to be on the right or it's going to be left, if it's going to be at 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock. So um, you can play around with those to figure out what, what, what direction you want your light source to become coming from and then your blur radius is how big you want your um, your shadow to be if you want a really big shadow um, or if you want just a little bit of a shadow to make just a little bit of, a, of an impact um, on your image I'm just gonna say around five because I don't want a huge shadow I just want a little bit of a glow and then I want um, 
my opacity, I can make this a very, very strong shadow or again, a light shadow, kind of um, thinking about whether or not it's a sunny day or if it's a, a, a little bit of a cloudy day where you've got some um, light diffusement. Okay, so I'm gonna click okay. And there you go, I've got my shadow. Now, my um, my little box right here that says allow resizing, I left that because what, what happened is over here on my layers, I now have actually two layers. The first layer is for my text and the second one is for my drop shadow. So my drop shadow, I can move it to be closer or further away from my red text if I wanted to. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click okay so that it'll it's done. And um, I somehow I managed to get two shadows. I think it was uh, that was uh, a mistake on my part. So I'm just going to drag one of them to the trash if it'll allow me. Okay, let me just turn it off. Um, and if I want to move that shadow, then I can simply just go over here to my move tool and move that shadow um, however I want to. So let's say I want it to go a little bit higher, I want it to be a little lower, to the right, to the left. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna actually move my shadow almost directly behind my, um, my text because I don't want it to be really huge. I just want it to make the red text pop out a little bit from the uh, image in the background, okay? Now, the um, one of the other things that I wanna do is my flag, it's really, really blue, right? It's really bright. And I, I don't want it to be the central focus of this uh, image. I just want it to be subtle in the background. So I wanna change the opacity on that. So I'm gonna select my flag background. And then up here where it says opacity, I'm gonna drop it from 100% down to let's say 80%, okay? And I can change that manually just by saying 80. Or I can, you know, use the, um, the scroll bar, either way. So, um, so I want it to be 80, just because I like round numbers. Okay, so now I've got Happy Veterans Day from Holly Suso, the techie mom. I've got my picture, I've got my image, and as you can see, I've got several layers here that have those different elements on it.